Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Dr. Andrea Barthwell, Deputy Director for Demand Reduction at the Office of National Drug Control Policy. I'm here today with Director John Walters, the nation's drug czar, and with the Surgeon General, Richard Carmona, the nation's doctor. Today's event is unprecedented. Gathered in this room is a broad representation of medical specialists and those who serve the interests of children. I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues in medicine dedicated to the healing arts who are here representing all but a few number of physicians through their medical organizations and medical specialty societies. Dr. Lawrence Brown, who is the president of the board of directors of the American Society of Addiction Medicine. Mary. Dr. Stephen Edwards, president-elect of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Dr. Natalie Carroll, president of the National Medical Association. And Dr. Richard Corlin, the immediate past president of the American Medical Association. I also would like to represent a number of dedicated individuals who represent organizations that promote and protect the interests of children. Steve Hornberger of the Child Welfare League of America, Steve. Betsy Glick of the Community Anti-Drug Coalitions of America. Elaine Brainerd, the National Center for School Health Nursing, Elaine. Peggy Sapp, National Family Partnership, hi Peggy. Colleen Horn with the American College of Emergency Physicians, Colleen. And Shirley Igo, President of the National PTA. I'd also le like to recognize one of our federal partners who's here today, Mr. Charlie Curie, who is the SAMHSA Administrator, Charlie. He has the lead responsibility for substance abuse treatment, prevention, and mental health services at Health and Human Services. The science that informs our understanding about marijuana has advanced. This research has changed our understanding, but the public has not yet caught up. We're standing here today because we all agree that it is important to change the way that America thinks about marijuana. We want to inform America about the science and about our concern. We're here to tell you about the problem that's facing us. This is an important issue to me. Last September 11th, I was stranded in Washington, D.C. at a local hotel, and Director Walters was awaiting his confirmation hearing, but of course it was not to happen that day. We had lunch and talked about a number of issues, but prominent among them was the marijuana problem. Now, here we are, just one year later, standing here having made enormous progress. It signals the commitment on this issue, despite the challenges of 9-11, and despite the changes that have occurred since then. Given those changes, many people would say that the marijuana problem is insignificant. This is simply not true. We will hear from leaders on national, from national organizations that are dedicated to giving parents the information and the tools that they need to raise happy, healthy children. But first, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. John Walters, Director of the Office of the National Drug Control Policy. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. I, uh, am, I'm pleased that we've been joined by professionals in this field, by people who are dedicated to preventing drug use in our communities, by people who won't be intimidated. And there has been intimidation and an effort to silence those who would talk about this issue on many fronts. Uh, we are a country that believes in free debate. We also believe in fair and accurate information. Um, we are not afraid of that debate. What we're afraid of is that too many cases, the facts about this problem have been ignored and we can't do the job we need to do if we don't explain to parents and we don't explain to young people what this threat is. We're here today to announce a broad collaboration between the youth anti-drug media campaign that my office is responsible for and leading public health, education, and drug prevention groups designed to warn parents and kids about the serious risks of marijuana. For too long, our nation's teens have been getting the wrong message about marijuana. Youth popular culture has trivialized the real harm of marijuana for kids. You can see some of that in the examples of materials that are around the room. You see some of that in the example you just saw. And many parents aren't talking to their kids about marijuana because of outdated and false perceptions about the drug. 
The result is pervasive myths and misconceptions about marijuana that put our kids at risk. Youth marijuana use is our nation's most serious drug problem. Consider the facts. More kids use marijuana today than cocaine, heroin, ecstasy, and all other illicit drugs combined. Sixty percent of our kids who use illicit drugs use marijuana only. Twice as many eighth graders today have tried marijuana compared to just a decade ago, from one out of ten to one in five. And more teens enter treatment for marijuana dependency each year than all other illicit drugs combined. And nationally, more enter and seek treatment for marijuana dependency today than for alcohol. Parents need to know that marijuana is riskier than they think, especially for kids. Smoking marijuana can lead to a host of health and behavioral problems for youth, disrupting families and jeopardizing our children's futures. Beginning this week, Parents will hear a new message about marijuana. Tomorrow, an open letter to parents about marijuana will appear in 293 newspapers nationwide. The letters here. It is signed, I'm pleased to say, by 17 of the nation's leading public health, education, and prevention organizations. And it warns parents that marijuana is a serious drug with serious consequences for young users. The open letter to parents is a part of a larger marijuana prevention initiative that we intend to undertake with the anti-drug media campaign beginning this fall. A new pamphlet is also being made available for parents. Additional advertisements targeted at young people as well as parents will be released in the coming weeks. Our effort is to correct the ignorance that is the single biggest obstacle to protecting our kids. We will also have uh, uh, collaboration with schools the New York Times program, Newspapers and Education, who will, uh, now has prepared this lesson, series of lesson plans available in schools, can be brought, been uh, received from the Internet. Information on that is in your packets. Our goal is to save more young people from the dependency and from the harm that too many of them suffer from today. And we can't do that without partners, partners in the home, and partners in critical institutions across our country. It's, a, it's an honor for me to be joined by the people here and the people represented in the signatures on the letter that will be published tomorrow because with this kind of, of effort across multiple institutions reaching multiple Americans, we will change the pattern of marijuana uh, in this country for the better and that will save more young people from this danger. Thank you. We're going to hear from a number of people, and there will be time for uh, questions at the end, so if you'll hold your questions, we'll have a roving microphone. Dr. Richard Carmona, United States Surgeon General, was nominated on March of 26 by the President to serve as the Surgeon General and tasked with speaking out on a number of issues. One of them was substance abuse. He was confirmed in, uh, in August of this year, has been on the job a mere six weeks, and he is already taking his task to heart and speaking out on substance abuse. We are delighted to have him here with us today. Dr. Camona. Thank you. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here, a privilege to be among my peers and uh, to address this very important issue. One of the jobs of the Surgeon General is really to be the people's doctor, to bring forth good science and articulate it in a manner that the public can understand, because often it's very difficult. And in issues such as this, sometimes it's hard to figure out what the good science is and how it should be applied. And I see that as one of my roles that the President and my boss, Secretary Thompson, have charged me with on a, on a number of issues, including this one. So I'd like to just make some brief remarks as it relates to the issue before us. Marijuana is a serious drug problem in the United States. Continued use is affecting the minds of our nation's youth and can distort their priorities that they have for their lives and their future. Of all teenagers in drug treatment programs, more than half have a primary marijuana diagnosis. More teens are using marijuana at earlier ages. We really need to stop these trends. As parents, leaders, and community members, we need to face this problem head on and teach our youth that marijuana is dangerous and addictive. I really am very proud of the stand that our president and our secretary, Secretary Thompson, Mr. Walters, the director, have taken in this important message to our parents and kids. 
the president has put together a formidable team to address these issues. We need to use all the tools at our disposal as a nation to rid illicit drug use from our streets and schools. There's a myth that marijuana smoking isn't as dangerous as cigarette smoking. That just isn't true. Anytime you ingest something into your lungs, generally it's not good for you. This is another one of those things that are ingested that can cause problems. In fact, marijuana contains three to five times more tar and carbon monoxide than comparable amounts of tobacco. Marijuana now accounts for a significant increase in emergency room visits, up 176% since 1994, which surpasses heroin emergency care in emergency departments. Smoking marijuana leads to documented changes in the brain similar to that that has been demonstrated in cocaine and heroin. So there is a correlation with the good science here. People have studied it. They've looked at the brain. They've used MRI, CTs, other mechanisms, and are able to demonstrate that there are changes that are harmful. Marijuana makes it harder for users to concentrate on tasks and projects and can lead to depression and thoughts of suicide. Marijuana is addictive. It's stronger and more addictive than it was 30 years ago. Of those who try it at least once, about 1 in 10 become a, a, a dependent on it. And right now, there are more young people in treatment for marijuana dependency than for alcohol and all other drugs combined. Marijuana is not a rite of passage, but a dangerous behavior that could have serious health consequences. Parents must realize what they tell their children about drug use makes a difference. They must actively engage in educate, educating their children and helping them to make healthy decisions. This is an effort in which every American plays a role. The partnership that we are trying to create, the team that I am a small part of here, really looks to bring all of us a groundswell nationally to address this issue because we all are the caretakers of our children. We need to accept responsibility for their health, for their safety, for their well-being, and we all play a part in making sure our children stay safe. This is one of many issues before us where we need to step up, put that team together, and make sure that our children get good information. It starts with the parents, the teachers, all of you, and the media as part of that team to make sure that the right message gets out because there's good science behind what I'm saying. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Cremona. Dr. Richard Corlin is the immediate past president of the American Medical Association. He's a gastroenterologist in private practice in Santa Monica, California. The AMA is one of America's most influential voices in medicine and represents over 300,000 physicians across the country. Thank you very much. Uh, the American Medical Association welcomes the opportunity to be one of 17 national organizations supporting the National Youth Anti-Drug Campaign Against Marijuana. For far too long, the message has been to our young people that marijuana is harmless when research has clearly proven that that is not the case. Research has clearly proven that, among other things, it is an entry drug to harder drug use. The AMA adopted a policy in 1969 declaring that marijuana is a dangerous drug and as such it is a public health concern. Although much has changed in American culture and medical research since we made that statement 33 years ago, the AMA's view on marijuana use remains exactly the same. It is mind-altering, it can be addictive, and it can lead to destructive behavior patterns. As physicians, we see the effects of marijuana use firsthand, often by children who aren't even in high school yet. In fact, the number of eighth graders, eighth graders who say they have tried marijuana has doubled in the past decade from just over 10% to just over 20%. What these children and perhaps even their parents don't realize is that marijuana use has serious and far-reaching health consequences that go beyond just the short-term high. It can cause mental health problems, such as increasing anxiety, panic attacks, and even depression. 
It can cause lung damage and leads to impaired judgment and, as a result, risky behaviors such as dangerous driving, unprotected sex, and increased delinquent behavior. It is time for all of us, parents, teachers, counselors, physicians, and anyone else who comes in contact with young people to stop sending conflicting messages. First, we must lead by example and not use marijuana ourselves or condone it by people of any age. Then we need to send the message to our children that it is a drug with serious consequences and its use simply will not be tolerated. This new national campaign is a bold first step in that direction, not based on anyone's ideas or preconceived notion, but based on hard facts and good science and good data. And the AMA and its member physicians are willing to do whatever it takes to help to spread this important message. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Corlin, for speaking out on behalf of 300 physicians members, 300,000 physician members of the AMA. Our next speaker is Dr. Stephen Edwards. He's the president-elect of the American Academy of Pediatrics and has served as the chair of the Wake County and North Carolina Drug Awareness Committee. The American Academy of Pediatrics is the nation's largest pediatric organization with a membership of close to 60,000 primary care pediatricians. Good afternoon. I'm happy to be here to represent as president-elect of the American Academy of Pediatrics. As you heard, I represent more than 57,000 pediatricians across the country. We are very pleased to join this initiative to raise awareness among parents, teenagers, and remember there are other children, too, about the harmful effects of marijuana. Make no mistake, marijuana is a dangerous, addictive drug that is available to our young people. For more than 30 years, I practiced pediatrics in Raleigh, North Carolina, where in addition to my practice, I chaired a, a local drug awareness committee for several years. There are many reasons why ch uh, children try drugs. Peer pressure, desire to escape from strong emotions, curiosity, rebellion, and sometimes just to have fun. Some have looked, uh, heard about their parents and about the stories of their parents' uh, drug uses in that generation in the past, and they equate that with, our parents used it, so it's not harmful, right? Well, the answer is wrong. Marijuana is riskier than many parents and children think. It can lead to serious behavioral problems and health problems for youth, disrupting families, and jeopardizing children's futures. Marijuana hurts young bodies and minds. It affects the brain, heart, lungs, sexual organs, the immune system, and as well as causing mental health problems for children. Pediatricians will tell you that marijuana can affect the child's development in a number of ways. First, it can impair learning and cause a child to have a short attention span, a short-term memory loss. Also, under the influence of marijuana, kids can become violent. Kids aged 12 to 17 who use marijuana weekly are five times more likely to steal and nearly four times more likely to, cause, to commit violent acts than those who don't. And lastly, it can make a child withdrawn or less motivated. Children and teenagers need to under understand that marijuana is not just a normal part of growing up. Parents, with the help of physicians and educators, can help guide their children into choosing a drug-free life. Based on the evidence about what marijuana does to the human body, no teenager or child should use it. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. We're next going to hear from Dr. Natalie Carroll. She's the president of the National Medical Association. 
Her concern for the health issues and the health status of African American families and physicians is reflected in her tireless advocacy for the delivery of quality health care. The NMA represents the interests of over 25,000 African American physicians in all medical specialties and is the leading voice for fairness and justice in medicine and the elimination of disparities in health. Dr. Carroll. Good morning or afternoon, depending on the time you're looking at now, because we're right at the cusp. I want to thank you for allowing us to participate uh, in this uh, announcement. We are very pleased to be here, and we do indeed uh, represent the African-American uh, medical community. And we are very concerned in our community uh, about the use of marijuana. And we are particularly concerned not only because of all of the things that have already been stated, but because we know within our community it is the gateway to serious drugs past marijuana. But we are also very concerned because we want our children to learn and to be able to attend in class. And we find that marijuana certainly interferes with having done that. We are also concerned about the brain changes that occur, the lung changes that occur, and we have to look at that in terms of the health care within our community, and we certainly don't need anything to further any health disparities that we already see within our community. So we are particularly concerned about the use of marijuana in our communities and the presence of marijuana in our communities. And we are further concerned that the pop culture that we have in our United States at this time has trivialized the seriousness of using marijuana within our communities. So we join with your organization to do whatever we can to further the information that is uh, disseminated within our communities across the country to be sure that our families, our communities, and our children are well informed. As both a mother and a physician, I am deeply concerned about this issue, and so is our organization. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carroll. Finally, we're going to hear from Ms. Shirley Igo. She serves as president of the National PTA. She's volunteered at the local, state, and national levels and has consistently promoted child health and child safety. The National PTA is comprised of more than 6 million members and is the largest volunteer child advocacy organization in the country. Shirley. Thank you. And as the president of the organization that represents six million parents and educators, these are our children that we're talking about today. And the solution to the problem of alcohol and drug abuse is, is not simple, nor will it be accomplished quickly. However, we do know that research and research tells us that when parents are actively involved in their children's lives, those children and youth have decreased use of drugs and alcohol. And that's why National PTA is so pleased to sign this open letter to parents about marijuana. Marijuana, as you've heard several times this morning, negatively affects our children physically, emotionally, socially, and behaviorally. And these are very critical concerns to parents. And for parents and the educators who work in partnership with us in the education of our children, the fact that marijuana can lead to significant learning problems at a crucial time in a young person's development is especially frightening. All substance abuse among youth is a critical issue, and parents and community must be aware of how to address this problem. Parent-child communication is one of the most important elements in keeping our kids drug-free. Parents must talk to their children about drugs and we have to start at an early age. It's important that parents nurture that communication, keeping all lines open throughout the preteen and the teenage years. And we all know that takes patience and practice. Equally important is for parents to listen to what their children are saying. Children and youth that learn from their parents about the dangers of underage drinking drugs, such as marijuana, and other harmful substances 
are less likely to use those substances. National PTA, with its more than six million members, is committed to the health and safety of all children. We've been a longtime supporter of alcohol and drug abuse prevention programs, and we hope that this letter will continue to increase the awareness among parents and the public of the dangers of substance abuse. But our work is not done there. Strong prevention programs must involve everyone, parents, students, schools, community. Prevention does require an investment in providing factual information, but it also means creating safe and nurturing environments for children, such as school-based after-school programs and school community support systems. It will take a sustained and a collaborative effort of all of us who have a stake in building healthy communities for our children. National PTA is pleased to be a partner in this effort to reduce substance abuse. Thank you. I want to thank our speakers again, Director Walters, Dr. Carmona, Dr. Corlin, Dr. Edwards, Dr. Carroll, and Ms. Igo, and invite you now to ask questions. If you'd raise your hand, we'll circulate with a microphone, and the speakers will come up to respond. There's a question over here. Yeah, um, there's a question for Director Walters. I'm with the National Post of Canada. Um, the Canadian Senate uh, recently uh, did a study which came to exactly the opposite conclusions on marijuana, both as to its harmfulness and its addictiveness, and recommended that Canada uh, look at legalizing marijuana. First of all, what do you think of that conclusion? And secondly, if Canada does follow that approach, what uh, response would you suggest uh, that the United States take? Well, I met with um, um, Senator Nolan, the chair of the committee in the uh, Canadian Senate in June. I met with uh, health ministry officials and justice ministry officials at that time. Um, I think it's important to note here that uh, both the health and justice ministry and other officials in the, the government have indicated that uh, the government of Canada no time soon intends to follow those, uh, those recommendations. Uh, so I think we shouldn't be precipitous here and expect something reckless. Uh, but secondly, I think that uh, uh, the issue is it can fairly be, be be made in terms of you know what is the damage and what does the science show. I think the science is something that obviously exists everywhere and always. But uh, in, in discussing this with Canadian officials, we recognize that Canada is a sovereign country. It's going to make its own decisions. I was, my father was born in Canada. I'm half Canadian, so I understand the uh, the uh, the importance of. Of, of that kind of self-government and pride there as well as here. But the, uh, uh, but the reality is that we have a common problem. Today, uh, uh, drug use in Canada is growing. Canadian officials point that out. Today, Canada has become a major supplier of, of, of very high potency marijuana in the western provinces as well as precursors for methamphetamine. We have become a major supplier of cocaine to Canada. In fact, some of the groups in the west coast are trading drug for drug and, uh, and insinuating these poisons into both populations. Our goal is to reduce the harm. And I think at, at bottom, the fundamental reality that I think is undeniable is no nation, no state, no city, no community is better off with more drugs or more the kids using drugs or more people dependent on drugs. And that is something that is simply undeniable. And so the question isn't, are we going to allow there to be more damage done by drugs and other, uh, another addictive substance? The question is, how are we going to minimize it, particularly when it comes to young people? And I think the important point that's been echoed by all people here and that is underlying this message is, we know from long research, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, if you do not begin experimenting in your teenage years, you are unlikely to go on and use later. This is something we can change the dynamics of for generations by doing what everybody believes is commonsensically our responsibility. Take care of our kids, give them the right message, give them supervision, and, and give them the support and clear understanding of what these threats are. This is a challenge, but it is within the realm of what should reasonably be expected of adults in a population and in a society that cares for its children as we all do. So we want to correct the ignorance and give people the opportunity to not be accept, not accept misinformation and not be in a state of denial that somehow in the past everybody said this is okay and there's something wrong with you if you say it's not okay. 
There's not something wrong with you if you say it's not okay. There's something wrong with you if you don't. Hi. Uh, in terms of your uh, media campaign, what leads you to believe that the campaign will work, particularly because, as you pointed out earlier, you are dealing with the media glorification of marijuana, particularly in, in, in the movie industry, and also more kids are using the drug. So why would a campaign like this work? There have been other campaigns, yet the numbers are going up. Uh, well, we don't expect the campaign alone to carry the burden. Uh, we know, and the groups represented here represent people, parents, physicians, uh, prevention uh, uh, groups that represent citizens throughout the country. This is not turn on the media, it's going to fix our problem for it. This is provide information about the need to cl make a clear statement about this threat and to make clear steps to supervise young people to make sure they get that information in particular. But in addition, we believe that the media can be powerful, and I would take some issue with your characterization of the media. There are certainly bad messages that reach and, 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 and mistaken and misguided messages that reach young people through the media. But it is not uniform. Uh, I think in some cases, televisions, television and the movies have made an effort not to glamorize drug use. And in fact, uh, many of the, the things you see now about drugs certainly do not show lives that are enriched by drug use in many cases. That's to the good. Part of our campaign provides information to write screenwriters and television uh, writers and, uh, and so that they can present this accurately. I don't believe that the media is irresponsible, fundamentally. I do believe that there has been a kind of cultural um, forgetting of what this danger is and a failure to, to, to uh, provide the information we know from most recent research and science about this threat and the trends in this threat. So we intend to use the media to help educate. I think that's the best, that's the best examples of what the media can do and what people in the media that are responsible, which the vast majority of them, of course, are. That's what they want to do. Tell people the truth. That's all we're asking. Sure. Uh, Steve Tatro, Las Vegas Review Journal. Uh, voters in Nevada are facing a ballot question this fall to legalize small amounts of marijuana. Does this coalition plan any special emphasis to get your message before people in that state through either this campaign or any other means? Uh, no, the campaign is a national campaign. It will appear in papers and on media throughout the throughout the country. Um, uh, people in Nevada will see it as other people who uh, are uh, recipients of media will see it. Uh, I, however, am going into every state where there's a ballot initiative uh, and working with people in uh, community coalitions and in um, uh, uh, public safety and public officials as well as private to uh, make the case uh, about why these are destructive to efforts in the state. I've already been in Nevada, as you may know, and I'm, I'll be back at least once, probably twice. Okay, um, and Kim with the AP. Dr. Corlin had mentioned that he was hoping that parents would lead by example, but um, already, you, uh, I think it was Dr. Cremona who said that uh, a lot of people consider marijuana use as a rite of passage. Is this campaign singling out or, or um, giving extra attention to parents who uh, may see this as a rite of passage or who, you know, continue to, you know, smoke an occasional joint? Yeah, I think we do want people who have that misunderstanding about uh, uh, that somehow marijuana use is inevitable. It's part of growing up. It's not. And too many people have been harmed because they've had that misunderstanding. But also, yes, we're telling uh, uh, parents, uh, your example makes a difference. And uh, that's not something that's a revelation, I don't think, for anybody, especially people who are parents or who have been raised by parents, which we all have. Uh, you, we know that when parents make a clear statement about this, the rates of use by their children, on average, decline dramatically. And uh, uh, so I know parents are frustrated by the limits of their authority. The fact is they have enormous authority. They do shape the views of, of their children, and that's why they have to engage on this, and they have to engage with facts, and that's why we're trying to provide this in both print and, uh, and as other educational materials through organizations like these who have contact and convey, convey information. But uh, um, certainly we're, we care about this. Nationally, and when we look at these issues, it's, it, this is the single biggest problem with regard to illegal drugs. We're not ignoring the other drugs. We're not ignoring alcohol. We're not ignoring cigarettes. If anything, those, the campaigns against those other dangers have in some ways been more vigorous than the, than the recognition of the threat of marijuana. We want to re-engage re on that issue because of the danger. One more. 
And also, just as a follow-up, how would you respond to those who say that alcohol is more dangerous a drug, if you will, than marijuana? Why is that not a valid argument in your, from your perspective? Well, alcohol certainly is a, a, a substance of abuse. Uh, there are uh, many people uh, who have need of treatment as a result of alcohol. Uh, there are many young people who have, have need of treatment. Alcohol is an illegal drug for young people. Uh, as I said, if we protect young people from what everyone agrees, and the science is unquestionable about this, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, we change the dynamic of these problems, the lives lost, the families destroyed, the communities harmed for generations. This is something we can do. We have driven down these rates of use before. The rates of use that we're talking about in the national strategy of 10% uh, of, uh, uh, in two years and 25% reductions in drug use are identical with the, freak, the rate of decline we had in the latter part of the 80s and the early 90s. We have done this before. We can do this again. This is not Herculean. It's simply a matter of bringing people together with the right information. Americans want to do this, I believe. It depends on what, well, the comparisons. In terms of nationally, because we have over 100 million drinkers, we have more people dependent on alcohol. We have 16 million drug users in this country. We have 6 million who have a dependency. In terms of, uh, of admissions to substance abuse treatment by young people, by teens, more of them are now presenting for dependency on marijuana than alcohol. That wasn't the case in the past. And that's a measure of how much this problem has worsened and needs to be addressed. Uh, I don't know what the precise inflection point was. I think it was probably, it's certainly in the last decade, but I don't know the precise year. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for leaving our guys. Okay.